This is a brief tutorial on how to fill out the IRB form for qualitative research, specifically for interviews or ethnographic or participant observation research. If you're doing a qualitative content analysis, remind you that you do not need to fill out an IRB approval request. So for um, this approval request, you need to pick one person in your group to be the primary investigator. So let's say that's Katie Brown. You need to have that person be sort of your point person with the IRB. You should also enter the name of your instructor or research mentor. And I'm on the IRB, so it might be easier to put my name there, along with the um, department and course number. And you only need to put the course number for the lecture class. You should include all of the other students in the project. And you need to give your project a title and just make it something very obvious, like interview study of women and um, ideas about health. Don't stress out about that. It's not a commitment to keeping that title. Your project start date. If you think you're going to need IRB approval, it should be uh, a week from when you turn the proposal in. And your anticipated project end date should be at the end of the semester. So when IRB asks for a brief description of your project, they don't care about your theory. They don't care about your literature review. They care a little bit about your research question, right? So you should write a nice paragraph about, or a nice sentence about your research question. Our research question is... But then what they really want to know is who are you going to be talking to? What is the research going to look like? So it should be really clear in this brief description, we're going to do interviews with college age women about their beliefs about health. You should specify how many interviews that will be. Um, so you might want to think about that, like, oh, um, our group has three people in it, so it'll be somewhere between 6 and 12 college-age women, right? So it's really important to give IRB a sense of the scale of your project. And this is the main information they care about. They want to know who you're going to be talking to, um, who you're going to be observing, and what kinds of things are you going to be noticing. Okay, so these, this set of three questions are really important. Right, so if your data will be gathered via survey, questionnaire, or interview only, you should click yes. If you're going to be doing ethnographic research, you should click no. Your data will not be collected from vulnerable populations. So some vulnerable populations might be people with HIV AIDS. Homeless individuals are oftentimes considered vulnerable populations. So if you are talking to people who are not considered vulnerable, you should click yes here as well. But let's pretend that um, that's not the case for your project, right? It will not be possible to identify research subjects from the data collected. Um, this is important. Um, so I'm not interviewing the mayor. I'm interviewing random college students, right? So it's very unlikely that, um, that people will know who the research subjects are based on the data that I've collected. And questions will not address sensitive issues. And so this is a little bit more subjective. If you think there's anything in your survey that might make someone upset, then you're onto a sensitive issue. So I'm going to assume no here. So if I had been able to answer yes to all of these, my project would be exempt from IRB of review. And what it means to be exempt is that if I say yes to all of these, they're all true then I actually don't need IRB review at all, and I can start my project right away. If I say no to any of these, I need to fill out the rest of the form. So I'm going to assume that for this case, that one of some of these questions were no, and that we're going to fill out the rest of the form together. Right. So here, I would want to write about a paragraph describing the populations that would be asked to participate in the project. So I'm interested in college-age women, and I would want to write this in full sentences, but here's just some of the details, right? College-age women from Trinity University and St. Mary's University who have participated in a body image program 
So these are all things that are gonna, like just giving basically the IRB more popular, more information about who would be asked to participate in the project. Um, I might say a little bit about I'll be recruiting them through social networks and contacting them via email. Then you have to describe kind of the methodology. Okay, so you're going to be doing interviews that are how long? That are 30 minutes long, typically. Um, I'll be using an interview guide with questions about X, Y, and Z. So I should describe these all in great detail. Or am I going to be giving them a questionnaire later on? Um, are uh, these interviews will be recorded unless the interviewee declines recording? So kind of going through the details, right? And then you need to explain, like, how will you get informed consent, right? So you're going to have a consent form, but um, also you'll explain it to them. And answer any questions, right? So here are some things you might want to address is like how will participants informed consent be obtained? In some cases you might be just sort of observing people around you um, but if you chat with someone how will you make sure they know that you're um, conducting a project, right? So you probably are not going to carry around a consent form at the farmer's market if you're studying people interacting with each other at the farmer's market. So you might say like I will mention to anyone I talk to that I'm writing a paper and I'm a student from Trinity University. Right? So it may not necessarily be a consent form. You should talk a little bit, if you're going to be tape recording somebody about sensitive issues, how will you store that data? So we always store data on a password protected computer. We never put it on a thumb drive, we never carry it around casually, we never put it on a desktop, right? Not permanently. So we always want to put it somewhere that's password protected. Um, so that can be your Dropbox or whatever. Um, that is also password protected. It's going to be analyzed um, without identifying information. Information and destroyed at the end of the project. Usually I say I'll destroy um, interviews, interview recordings after five years or after transcription. But it kind of depends on how long um, the project itself lasts. Right, so these are some of the details that you need to um, address if you're going to do this. You also, if you note know up here, you need to send a copy of your research protocol and instrument to IIB at trinity.edu. So your, most of your protocol is already mentioned here, right? So you will need to send your list of interview questions and your consent form to um, the IRB chair which is Harry Wallace, and you'll want to email him directly, not follow these directions, right? And so that, uh, that is the basics of applying for IRB approval.